Hi, this is Steve Yee, Director of Product Management for SQL Azure. In this walkthrough, I'll demonstrate how easy it is to extend, share, and integrate your SQL Azure data with mobile and heterogeneous applications using other programming platforms via a NoData service. First, we'll review the benefits of using SQL Azure. Then we'll do a brief recap of an existing application built with ASP.NET MVC3 that stores employee expense reports in SQL Azure. In this walkthrough, we'll extend this base application to work with other platforms. I will then enable this server application to expose some of the data via an OData service. And finally, I'll show how a variety of different client applications can interact with this OData service, and I'll demonstrate how to use the OData service within an Android application. So let's get started. When you move your data to SQL Azure, you can free up time and reduce risk associated with managing and maintaining your own in-house database servers. Once in SQL Azure, your database is highly available, reliable, and scalable, and can be accessed from anywhere via the internet. SQL Azure is also highly flexible and allows you to pay as you grow, eliminating the need for upfront capital expenditures. OData, which stands for the Open Data Protocol, is a protocol that is designed for querying and updating data over web-based standards and technologies such as HTTP, AtomPub, JSON, and XML. It enables easy integration of SQL Azure data with any desktop, web, or mobile-based application. OData provides a new level of interoperability as client applications on any platform can access and integrate with these services. This includes clients running on non-Microsoft platforms and mobile devices such as Android or iPhone. I'll start by spending a few moments opening the .NET solution that we created during a previous walkthrough. I'll be using the free version of Visual Studio called Microsoft Visual Web Developer 2010 Express, but you can follow along with any version of Visual Studio 2010. As you can see, this solution includes a cloud service project, so that we can run the application in the local Windows Azure emulator as we develop the application. We can then easily deploy the app to Windows Azure when we're ready. So let's run the application via the cloud project and remind ourselves of what we wrote. As you can see, we have a list of expenses associated with employees and the ability to edit those expenses. We built this application by using an entity framework model that is connected to our SQL Azure database. So let's go ahead and take a quick look at our application. Switch back to the IDE and open models slash expense model .edmx. As you can see, our model includes employees, expense reports, and expense details tables. While this web application allows users to access expense data via their web browser, we can expand our capabilities so that other applications can integrate with this data. Prior to cloud and OData technologies, web service APIs were developed just to read and update the data. But now, much of this functionality can be made available just by exposing the data via an OData service. So let's go ahead and enable our application to expose an OData service that's standards compliant. Let's right click Expense Web and add a new item. Next, select WCF Data Service and let's give it a name of Expense Data Service.svc. Now click Add. Okay, as you can see, we have a new class that is based on the Data Service class, which is going to do most of the work for us. There are a few comments in here to help us configure the data source we want to use, so let's do that. Let's change this section of the code to use our Entity Framework Expenses model. Now, we can set up some access rules for what data should be exposed. I'll expose the Expense Reports and the Employees table by changing my Entity Set to Expense Reports and add a new row for Employees. Let's rebuild the solution. Then, I'll right-click Expenses Data Service at SVC. I will then select Set as Start Page. Okay, let's rebuild the project and make this service our startup page. As we can see here, our service responds to a browser request with some details about the service. And we can see employees and expense reports information is available. So let's demonstrate some OData queries right here in the browser to give you a feel for the service that we've enabled. First, let me add expense reports to the end of the URL to get to expense reports entity data. Okay, the service returns a list of expense reports in XML format. Now, let's briefly look at the query flexibility of this OData service. 
Let's say I want to just see expense reports in the pending state and wish to order these expenses by business purpose. I can do that easily by just appending filter and order by parameters directly to my URL. As you can see, now I get the results I requested. While this is a simple example, the OData protocol has many features beyond simple filtering and sorting. Updating data and extracting data from related entities is also supported. However, for the purpose of this walkthrough, I just want to give you a feel for the many capabilities of the service we just enabled. Okay, our server setup is complete. Let's keep this service running locally, and let's build a couple of mobile apps to consume the OData service we just enabled. Let's now consume our OData service on an Android phone. For this section, we'll be using the Eclipse IDE with the Android development tools installed. So let's open Eclipse and create a new Android project. First, we'll set some properties and choose a target Android platform version. Be sure to select the option to create a startup activity. I'll give this one a name of Main Activity and click Finish. Next, I set up some properties in the configuration. Select Run, then Run Configurations. Create a new configuration. Select the project name we just created. On the Target tab, make sure to select the AVD for the Android version we're using. Let's run the app to see what defaults we have and to make sure that the Android development emulator is set up correctly. Great, we're set up and ready to go. So let's find our startup activity class and add some code to work with our OData service. I could write some Java code here that uses an HTTP client class to talk to our OData service, but since there are a couple of Java libraries available for OData, I'll use one of those. I've chosen a library called OData for J, so if you are following along, you will need to add a reference for that to your project. You can download the OData file from the following link. Okay, so let's open our main activity class and see how much code we need to write to talk to our service. I intentionally kept this code as simple as possible, but as you can see, there aren't too many lines of code here. All we're doing is querying our expense reports and showing them in a list view control on the user interface. In this snippet of code, we are accessing our OData service after it was deployed to Windows Azure. But since we're still hitting the same SQL Azure database, our expense data is the same. Our query filters the expenses to include just those with a pending status. Once we get the results back, we will just pull a couple of the data fields and add them to our list. So let's run the app again and make sure we are getting some data back. Great! The records we got back are all pending, which is what we asked for. Creating an Android app to consume our OData service turned out to be fairly easy and required very little code associated with the integration. In a real-world scenario, we would have authentication, caching, paging, data updating, and UX to implement, but our OData service already has capabilities to support most of these efforts. So, in this session, we've demonstrated how easy it is to expose our SQL Azure database data to other applications via an OData service hosted in Windows Azure. We also walked through a mobile application integration with Android. There are other great examples of applications that use OData feeds, and there's one from Netflix that is worth checking out. You can see this application and get the code at the link provided. And finally, the SQL Azure OData service is currently available via SQL Azure Labs. This service will allow you to directly access your SQL Azure data via the OData protocol without having to host your own service in the cloud as we've done here. Learn more at SQL Azure Labs. Thanks for watching and please visit sqlazure.com for the latest information and resources.